Okay, so we're situating ourselves, talking about the associations between variables, plotting them, so graphically, but also numerical summaries like covariances and correlations. Uh, it's not the main focus oh, of our course, uh, but there's an interesting history to the development of, of these techniques, and broadly the history of statistics is its own field. Um, here are a number of pioneers of the field that dealt with things like correlation and regression. Um, the history of statistics is littered with terrible people, uh, people who had awful ideas, um, including, well, many of these people. Um, Galton was uh, a lot of the originator of the ideas of correlation and regression. Pearson, his student, Edgeworth, all the work relatedly, uh, Udney Yule. Uh, except for Yule, uh, these were eugenicists and led to the Galton is associated with kind of the, the founding of the eugenics movement, um, which has had, of course, terrible repercussions throughout history uh, since. Um, there are also, in many ways, the history of statistics is littered with terrible people when it comes to treating women, or terrible treat people when it comes to even treating colleagues uh, that uh, nominally they said that they uh, were comfortable with. That's a whole separate topic, um, but uh, there's a lot of misbehavior um, uh, from small scale up to enormous grand uh, cataclysmic scale in the history of statistics. Uh, if there's time in our course, I'd be happy to talk more about some of these uh, things if folks are interested, but our purposes now are to highlight a few things. First of all, this is not that long ago when these people were doing this work. Um, in terms of the history of the sciences and even data analysis, this isn't that long ago when ideas about formalizing notions of correlation and association and some of the tools and statistics we still use today compared to the history of, of other scientific endeavors. Um, other thing to highlight, uh, anyone ever hear of Galton outside of regression class or anything like that? You ever hear of Charles Darwin? Um, yeah. yeah, they were related. They were um, their um, distant cousins. And, and Galton certainly was uh, aspirational to make the fame of Darwin, uh, probably didn't, didn't quite make it if we've all heard of Darwin, but not so much Galton. <laughs> um, that said, as we will see, some of his particular interests uh, kind of, we can see the connections to what cousin Charles was working on in terms of things like uh, evolution and natural selection and what eventually became known to understand things like heredity and, and so on. Okay. Turning to statistics, we're often interested in two variables, how they relate, bivariate, bi meaning two, or more generally, more than two, multivariate. Right now, what we're going to discuss is measures that are quantitative or continuous in nature. Later on, we'll mention and we'll deal with in our course in different ways, things like categorical variables. We're going to go over representations, graphic, as well as uh, numerical or summary and numerical statistics. Here's a tiny little data set, seven subjects. I measured their height and their weight. Okay, it's listed there in a table. This is a nice summary or this is a nice representation for recording the values. This is not very useful for understanding relationships. It's hard to say what's going on here in the relationship between height and weight looking at a table. Enter scatter plots, our graphical summary. Here's a scatter plot of this data. The way we construct these plots, we've got a horizontal axis representing one variable, vertical axis representing the other variable, x and y conventionally, and each point in space, uh, in the space cut, uh, defined by these axes, gives us the value of the data point. So I expect we're all very familiar with this kind of idea, but literally this, this was a person in our data set, this point represents that person. They have a particular value along the x-axis, that's 5.2. They have a particular value along the y-axis, that's 140. Each point locates a person in this space. What kind of pattern would we describe this as? What kind of pattern do we see here? Positive, linear, linear. yeah, this is the kinds of descriptions that we can see from scatter plots, can't see from tables. 
fleshing this out, a couple of different pieces of information we get from scatter plots. The first, direction of association. So if we just said there's a positive relationship and if you're like me you almost can't help but just try to at least mentally put like a trajectory or a line going through pictures like this. The notion of positive corresponds to the idea that there's an association here. Lower values on X towards the left side of the horizontal axis tend to go with lower values of Y further down the vertical axis. Higher values of X tend to go with higher values of Y. Negative relationship, we have the opposite pattern. Low X values tend to correspond to high Y values. High X values correspond to low Y values. There's that visualization, if you're like me, that sort of captures the trajectory. Of course, we might have no association, neither positive nor negative. Here we have the scatter, but it doesn't look to me like there's any kinds of trend. If I look at the low values of X, they tend to go with moderate, low, moderate values of Y. As I move up the values of X, it still tends to go with moderate values of Y. They don't look like they're systematically shifting. Second piece of information we get, how strong the association is. So here is a perfect or maximally strong positive uh, association. Everything lines up. Right. Literally, the points fall in line. Here's a perfect negative. Just to give you a sense, even without the magnitudes, uh, this uh, is meant to represent increasingly strong positive associations. Start there at the upper left. There's no association there. Right? If you're just looking at that scatter plot in the upper left, uh, you wouldn't be persuaded to think about any kind of positive or negative trajectory. Growing across the top row from left to right, you start to see it tend to crystallize a little bit more firmly in the second row, moving left to right, and then the third row moving left to right. Increasingly strong association. Literally, the points are clustering together in such a way that we see the line. Same sort of thing for negative associations. Absolutely the same. So a little bit of a summary here. Well, first of all, there's a history here, scatter plots. Uh, this is a representation of the first scatter plot uh, made uh, from Galton. The, uh, the, the graphical conventions are a little bit different now, but um, just to kind of illuminate this, the, uh, the, the horizontal axis is the height of people, the children, and the vertical axis is the height of their parents, so out of, in adulthood and their parents. It's called the mid-parents because it's a combination of uh, uh, father and mother, a little bit of an adjustment uh, to do a little bit of averaging, measured in inches, and there's deviation scores, and it's plotted in a way that we wouldn't today, and it has a number of these different axes or lines, some of which we'll talk about in our course, others of which you might come across um, in other statistics training. Um, but the numbers here indicate frequencies of, of data points. And what you can see is that there, there are a lot of bigger numbers here and here, not so many big numbers here and here. And that gives us this contour that's overlaid, which is a positive relationship. We don't tend to make scatter plots like this anymore with frequencies, but this is the idea. Some other nice um, examples. Here's a plot. Um, I, I think it's the entire United States. I can't remember. Each data point here is um, a location. I don't know if it's city or zip code or county. I can't remember the, the unit, the geographic unit. But plotted along the horizontal axis is the um, remote worker share from 2015 to 2019. So what proportion of the working age population was working remotely from 2015 to 2019, pre-COVID pandemic. Vertical axis is the rise in housing prices from, yeah, if we look at the title, from 2019 to 2021. So how many people were working remotely before the pandemic? That's the, the horizontal axis. Vertical axis is how much did cost of housing go up during the pandemic? 
first couple of years. We see a nice positive association, nice meaning a clear positive association here. In locations where there was less remote work, there tend to be less growth in the price of housing. The more and more remote work there was in a location, the bigger the increases in the price of housing. This is a nice thing, a scatter plots are a nice way of communicating these kinds of patterns. Uh, here's another example um, I like. This is, um, I forget which year this is, um, but this is a scatter plot. Oh, okay. Um, of NCAA softball teams. Yeah, 2022, thank you. Uh, NCAA softball teams. And the axes here are basically of all the teams, I think, in the NCAA tournament. Um, the axes here are the uh, horizontal axis is how good they are in terms of hitting, that is batting or offense, and the vertical axis is pitching. Okay. So each little icon here is a representation of the school, oh. and it locates them in terms of relative to where they are in terms of are they a below average or above average hitting team, horizontal axis, and pitching team, vertical axis. The um, uh, the, the icons that are darker, you can see some of them are lighter and some of them are darker, uh, hopefully. The ones that are darker, they're the, the teams that had the best records. They got to host games. Well, where do we see them? They tend to be up there in the upper right quadrant. Those are the better hitting and better pitching teams. Sure enough, they won more games, got to host games in the NCAA tournament. Hmm. This is a, just a different representation where you can say, all right, what are the... Show me the teams that are tend to be not so great hitters, but they're excellent pitching and so that way. Um, another uh, one that I like is really nice interactivity. I encourage you to check out the website and you can tinker around with this. This is just a, a, a screenshot of this. This comes from the Educational Opportunity Project uh, here in the United States. Um, I think each place is a, is it a school district, I think. And the horizontal axis is the average family socioeconomic status in that school district, lower and higher. And then vertical axis is performance of students in that school district on uh, test scores. And so what we can see is that in school districts where there are uh, families on average tend to have lower SES, we tend to see lower uh, test scores from students there. School districts with higher family SES, higher test scores as well. A couple other things I'll highlight here. Um, this conveys other things, like there's a color coding scheme to this that conveys some other information. There's the size of the point, conveys other information, like the size of the school district. This is a wonderful little interactive site that lets you look at different variables and say, I want to graph this with this and select for this and highlight this. It's a really nice interactive environment that they've put together there. So scatter plots. They help us visualize patterns, understand relationships, and provide guidance for further analyses. Help us answer questions like, what's the association? Does it tend to be linear? Are there strange data points like outliers? Are there clusters of points in different places? Um, you can almost never make too many scatter plots. There's is always a good idea before doing any more uh, complicated analyses in, in multivariate that is dealing with more than one variable. Have a look at scatter plots to look at associations.